What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Outtrapper channel coming to you with another edition of Bloodies, Leans, Likes, and Lacks MLB. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. But I do a little bit of a recap here, mainly because Friday, it was fantastic. Finally, we got a day in the books that went our way to the for the most part, for the most part, premium discord. Again, Boston Moneyline ended up locking that one and went through the results. Obviously, was down a little bit for the week. So first week of MLB in the books, first official week, that is, in the books. We had the Soul Series. We had a couple of games on that Thursday, Friday, the week before. And then, yeah, that was our first five gamer there. So not ideal, not exactly what I was looking for. But I got to say, we're accumulating sample size. We are figuring things out as we go. We got cold situations, a lot of ballparks where it's not easy to hit it out. And again, hitter props, they're pretty tough to beat here this time of year. Obviously, you can take the minus 330 Mookie bets hit props at times and put them together with, you know, Shohei Otani and things. We'll actually talk about Shohei Otani because I'm kind of a fan here going to Minnesota. But uh, either way, what I'm getting at is that we want to be very, very cautious here. And yet today, I do have a lock on the card here for Monday. Got a spot that I think we should be invested in uh, more than the average bear, that's for sure. So going to have a, a unit, maybe a little bit more if I want to double dip later. But have a feeling it's going to move our direction. And well, that's probably going to be some public money too. So it doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot. Again, MLB, we're accumulating sample size here in the early season. We don't want to get crazy here with some of these cards. We want to take our time and then we will dive in once we kind of know what the heck is going on. The ball can change. The pitch clock is hurting Spencer Strider and everybody else. And it's hurting my heart. Uh, Shane Bieber, which again, that sucks. Even as a Twins fan, I don't want to see Shane Bieber out. But here we are, friends. Lots going on in this MLB season, such as betting. Jam, we'll talk about Chopper here as well. Let's talk about it from a betting angle. We have leans. Those are things I'm thinking about betting. Those are likes. Those are usually around half a unit, quarter unit for a lot of the home run props. And then locks. Those are unit or more. We got one of those here on Monday. Without further ado, producer Jacob, hi. Hope you had a great weekend, my friend. Let's get to the picks. And our first game has no official starters, but I do think we get this combination of pitchers because Tristan McKenzie was going to pitch. They end up getting postponed in Minnesota, which shouldn't matter because again, Minnesota and them are going to link up a lot this season, less than in previous seasons because they've changed the way that divisional teams play each other, as they should because playing 40 games or whatever the shit you might have been playing against your former team, that's an exaggeration, but... It felt like we played Cleveland a lot once upon a time, but I think Tristan McKenzie is the guy that they end up rolling out here in this spot. He's actually listed at a couple books, so I'm going to roll with that one. The guy who's not anywhere right now is the starter for the White Sox. I think it's going to be Jared Schuster. Now, he got option to AAA a couple of weeks ago. AAA, Charlotte, that is. Charlotte's the affiliate there for the Chicago White Sox in AAA. I think they end up calling him up here to have this start on Monday. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I do think that's who it ends up being. You bring a lefty in against Cleveland, and I think lefties, they might have a little bit more, just ever so slightly more success against Cleveland. Now, Cleveland, early going of this season, you know they're not going to strike out a ton. 18.4% hit against righties, 106 WRC plus, but against lefties, friends, and that just happens to be what shoots is you get a little bit more of a leg up in terms of like not getting completely flummoxed in terms of the strikeout stuff. Now, there's only six plate appearances. They do have over 50 WRC plus, so it's way higher. But I look at this, line, look at their individual bat, uh, batting matchups here. There's add more ones where you can kind of do this batter by batter by batter, and it'll help you. You can look at the exact pitch mix, and you can definitely kind of intertwine that into your analysis. It's not just analysis, but into your handicapping, how you look and view that specific. Spot, but uh you've got Bo Naylor neutralized a little bit more. Josh Naylor had a good year in 2023 against lefties, had been fallen by the way previous to that. So I want to accumulate more sample size with him, especially. Steve Kwan left on left. Stop looking at me, Kwan. And then Jose Ramirez switch header, so he doesn't really matter. It's not necessarily gonna go as a knock against him. He's good against everybody. But Jared Schuster, he's not very good. Kind of is what it is, but I've got Cleveland on the run line as well. Again, we need to get it confirmed that it's going to be Schuster here on the mound. They're the better ball team. And yeah, Chicago, if it ends up being Quincy, they are horrendous. 69 WRC plus thus far, 22.5% K rate in 213 appearances this year against righties. Nifty, we continue on our merry way. Next up, we have the Marlins. We have the Yankees. Uh, the Marlins confirmed not good so far this season. That's for sure. That's why you see a one. They've got one W. Good job, guys. What are they doing? 
like their bullpen has been downright atrocious here at this at uh, this point but i mean it's kind of like starter issues everybody issues and obviously it's early in the season yet again and they found like fascinating ways to play baseball but one and nine so far one and nine oh nestor cortez on the mound going up against them we're still happy with him from opening day it was Nestor cortez we ended up getting that w but nestor cortez numbers have not been good 45.7 percent hard hit 15.2 percent k rate big big fall off but hazel cesardo in this spot on the other side He's got some concerning stuff here as well. Now, the ball is coming a lot harder off of bats opposite of him. 45.5% hard hit through two starts. Uh, that is much higher than 40%. The K rate continues to be there, and the walks have gone up. But like overall, 3.55 expected ERA. What I find surprising is that I'm still not a fan of anything on the Miami side in terms of this lineup. And I think when you look at the bullpen and what they have been doing, which is just giving up gobs and gobs of runs here thus far, I think we're kind of buying low on Nestor Cortez and you would be buying high a little bit on he's like Lazardo is going to start getting it going. Like Lazardo has the kind of strikeout stuff we want to be backing, but God, I just don't know how Miami gets it going here anytime with this lineup specifically against lefties. Like Jake Berger, pretty decent. Josh Bell, not his preferred side, but decent enough. I just look at Miami against lefties so far this season. 48 WRC plus is third worst in baseball. Only a 20.8% K rate, but a 0 0.072 ISO. You're going to have to bury Jazz Chisholm. I mean, this is just not a very fun situation for them going up against left-handed pitching. And as such, I think Cortez has a little bit of a bounce back spot in Lazardo. Yeah, there's some guys in Aaron Judge, Charcoaler Stanton, Glaber Torres, Anthony Volt, 45.5% hard hit percentage. We'll see if it continues, but I do think a small player on the Yankees money line, there's actually a number of like small play type money lines that I think are in play. I think this one makes a cut purely because Fish confirmed not able to hit a lot of these lefties here of late. And then the Yankee side, they've proven they can hit some lefties more than their average share, even a good one like Jesus Lazardo. And plus you get to these pens, it's not close at the moment. The Detroit Tigers taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. I got to say, uh, we got Mr. Reese Olsen up top here taking on Mitch Keller. Uh, comeback Keller last year. It's starting to regress in a quick way through a couple of starts here this season. 169 pitches, 5.44 expected ERA. Much, much higher. Looking more like his 2021 numbers through two starts. And I say it all the time. We're still figuring out who these guys are. But one thing, the cutter. That cutter that he introduced in 2023, he stopped throwing it in 2021 because of issues with it. If this pitch starts to be an issue, it's the thing he's thrown the most through two starts. Again, he got rid of it entirely for two years because of its inefficiency. Actually, just 2022, but part of 2021, it had gone by the wayside because of how inefficient he was with it. So I'm not sure what to make of that, but it doesn't make you, uh, doesn't inspire greatness. I will say that much. I will say that much. And that's kind of what I'm looking at with this play. First, just to talk about Reese Olsen for like 2.2 seconds because he kind of deserves it. He's pretty good so far. 195 expected batting average. A righty who does have to contend with some lefties. We know the power that exists with like the Jackson Winskis, with the O'Neill Cruises, and in this Pittsburgh lineup. But overall, pretty neutral type ballpark factors here. It is going to be like high 60s, which for around baseball is higher than most. But that's reflected here in some of the numbers that I'm looking at. I will say, I think the other one that is interesting is Kerry Carpenter here. I do like some of these Detroit bats at the top of the order. I think you're going to get Kerry Carpenter, who led off the other day against a righty. I think that going to... 612 expected slugging is not nothing through 18 batted ball events. 9.1% K rate. Not striking out, getting on base, finding ways to be effective, and has power. I'm looking not just at his home run props, but I'm going to specifically highlight two plus hits, two plus total bases, because if he's completely different here, these are going to be ways that we can kind of well, maybe, if you can react to it before he's actually leading off here, if that's not completely reflected by all the books, although it will be for me. I think that Kerry Carpenter could be an undervalued bat, not guaranteed by any means, but plus money, nice plus money on both of those. That would be fun, friends, against Keller. Game number four, we got Milwaukee, we got Cincinnati going to Great American Small Park. Uh, Aaron Ashby starting with him on the Milwaukee side. Really good stuff in that first outing. This is an arm that I really like. Southpaw, he's 25. He continues to find ways to be effective at the big league level when healthy. 2023, not great, but 
again, not healthy. 2021, he had a three expected ERA, 3.75 expected ERA in that 2022 as a starter. That was especially impressive. Much better than the 4.55 and 4.44 ERA he's had. He's had strikeout stuff. He's had that ability here. I think we should be looking at backing him in some capacity here. And I try to figure out what I'm going to do with it because I look at some of the numbers here at open. Not a big fan of them by any means, but don't have a K prop on him. And again, it's going to be his first outing. He looked pretty darn good there. Uh, what, Jacob Junis? He's going to be on the injury list now already. Another one of those pitchers that... I don't know what's going on. It's like a plague. We have velocity down for a number of these guys. We have Bieber, talked about him at the open, talked about, you know, Mr. God, this makes it's my dynasty team is dead. Spencer Strider, God, just pain, suffering, sadness, all the things. But yeah, he started in AAA Nashville. I'm excited to see Aaron Ashby come back here against a, a Cincinnati Reds team that will roll out nine righties. We saw that today, but at the same time, I'm not very impressed by a lot of the quality of the back end guys. I think it's going to be a very, very bleak situation for some of them. So let's look at the Milwaukee side, as you've got some lefties that I do like. Jesse Winker is one for sure. Or not Jesse Winker, he's gone. But uh, Jake Bowers, that's who I was getting at. You got William Contreras there going up against uh, Graham Ashcraft, who was Ash. He was Ashcraft in this first hour. That's who you're looking for. Good puns. These are fun times. How about Christian Yelich making some changes to his swing a little bit? 734 expected slugging. I want to highlight his launch though, because his launch is the thing that changed that really has me interested. Again, my home run model factors in launch, taking obviously the temperature and barometric pressure into consideration. In addition to looking at K rates, which I think is an underrated thing when it comes to evaluating homers, because if you can be a power bat who is now facing somebody who doesn't get swing and miss, that's awesome. Now, Yelich has never been like a crazy high strikeout guy, except for one year in 2020 where he was still fantastic. So who cares? But he's down to 22.2% last year and 20% in K rate so far this season, just 123 pitches he's faced, not very many plate appearances. So don't want to go completely crazy with it, but pretty low K rate here. And not that we're worried about it for Ashcraft. For me, this is just something to keep in consideration going forward on things that I care about. I think a lot of you have heard me talk about that before. You face a K pitcher, going to be getting a lot of swing and misses against some of the big boppers, but some of the big boppers against guys who don't strike out a lot of people like Graham Ashcraft could be fun. Now, just a 20.8% K rate here thus far this season. That's actually up from his previous numbers, sitting around an 18, 17% type K rate guy uh, projected going forward on Steamer, uh, looking at zips, looking at a lot of the projection sources. That's kind of in line with his 17.8% K rate in 2023. So Yelich to home run. Christian Yelich here, friends. See Yelich. Let's party. Let's talk about Odd Chopper. Friends, 1495 weekly, 4995 monthly for the Odd Chopper premium tools and Discord insider access. Again, I know I'm giving picks here on the program, but it's not about picks. It's about process. I'm trying to teach you how I go about picking things out. And one of the major ways that I find bets is the market based approach over at Odd Chopper. That is basically shopping for the best lines at the best books, utilizing them. Because again, these books, they're not stupid. They know how to project out a lot of these different lines, but there's some low hanging fruit at some spots. You can compare them against one another and find inefficiencies in the marketplace. There is too much surface area on a 13, 15 game MLB slate to cover all of it. And that is where the OS premium tools and the positive EV tool specifically comes into play. You have an opportunity to really capitalize in those spots, $49.95 uh, weekly, $49.95 monthly. And that is in addition to my premium betting card in the Discord Insider Access. Uh, not only that, but you've got multiple analysts here on the Odd Chopper channel that you know and love where you can hook yourself up with that. And using promo code LINDY, <gasps> bang, L-I-N-D-Y, expert picks, Discord Insider Access, and premium tools all in one place, all in one package. That is $12 for your first week at the link below. Back to the picks we go. I'm going to be quick with this one because they're two pretty darn good pitchers. And again, there's... Tough stuff like this, when you have good offenses, like the Mariners, Blue Jays, you're going to be playing indoors unless they want to be playing in like 40, 42 degree weather in Toronto tomorrow. I don't think they do. So uh, bet the roof is closed. Again, it's one of the funny things that happens with my modeling because it does the temperature regardless of what it looks like outside. And for some of these retractable roofs, huh, there's that. Then there's spots like Tampa Bay that I just 
I hate the ballpark, but I love it at the same time because I never have to do any analysis. They're playing in a dome. Yay. Why does every ballpark in baseball not have a roof? Now, I get it, I guess, for like the Wrigley Fields. Just for Wrigley Field. Trying to think of another ballpark that I'd be okay with them not having a roof. It's Wrigley Field. That's the only one I got. Uh, Minnesota, great job, guys. Target Field not having a roof. You guys are awesome. I love going and freezing my ass off. But Luis Castillo, Jose Barrios here. Jose Barrios of my Minnesota Twins once upon a time. We picked on him quite a bit once upon a time. 527 expected slugging is up. 56% hard hit percentage through 34 batted ball events. Not ideal, but it's already be fa being factored in. He is starting to fall by the wayside. Again, smoke and mirrors, and that's why you're seeing the eight and a half uh, total that we have here. 6.79 expected ERA is horrendous, but a 2.25 ERA? Mm. Books don't care anymore about what your ERA is. They care about the expected ERA just like I do at this point in time. Again, eight and a half. If you knew Barrios was going to be a two, three ERA type dude, this line would be seven and a half quick because Luis Castillo is definitely the better of the two pitchers at this point in time. 24% K rate thus far this season, just a 6% walk rate, much improved, well, not much improved, much better than Barrios on the other side's 17% K rate and 8.5% walk rate, respectively. 295 X Woba, that is nifty. 3.45 expected ERA. Again, positive regression is due for him. Exact flip side for him, 6.75 ERA. And that's where the Seattle money line, I want to fire it ever so badly. But I respect Toronto's offense enough and Castillo going through his numbers in previous seasons. 41.8% hard hit percentage last year was the highest of his career. Has his home games in Seattle. That is a huge benefit to any starting pitcher in baseball. So on the road here, I'm not going to partake. Although at even money, I definitely thought about it. We reach my favorite spot and it's going to be a lot of people's favorite spot of this Monday. I think this is actually going to be publicly backed and I don't really care. As you work through the numbers, it's just ridiculous. Let's start with Charlie Morton and the Atlanta Braves here on this side of things. A 30.8% hard hit percentage, 272 X Woba, and I'm not one who thought I was going to be locking anything coming into Monday because we're accumulating sample size. Again, just 13 batted ball events here for Charlie Morton this season. One start, 91 pitches, 2.98 expected ERA. Working through the numbers, everything in its right place so far. No earned six strikeouts you're happy with this version of charlie morton going forward if you're an atlanta braves fan you're going to need this version of charlie morton going forward if you're a braves fan especially come postseason play if there is an issue here and there are major issues here with spencer strider at the moment again heartbroken over that one for my dynasty team obviously braves fan i'm not but 2.89 expected area from charlie morton that is going to uh, be a lot better than what you have at the 4.64 expected era he had in 2023 wasn't nearly as good of a pitcher but still somebody on the radar that you can back in this kind of a spot going up against a mets offense that's so far sputtering out of the gate and that's kind of putting it nicely i would say 252 plate appearances against right-handed pitching dead last in baseball with a 57 wrc plus so we are talking about the team that is dead last so far in baseball with a 57 WRC plus taking on the team that is first in baseball through 189 plate appearances with a 168 WRC plus friends. They get Julio Tehran on the other side of this one, who was one of the worst bottom five starter that I had in baseball over the last two and a half seasons. Again, three years I've been doing this program, three years. And this is one of the more like square peg, square hole spots that you're going to find early in an MLB season. I generally don't lock a ton of things early in MLB as we're accumulating sample size and being comfortable. Hey, what's the ball doing? Wait for the weather to improve in a lot of these spots and getting the same type of numbers on home run props that you might, you know, when it's 45 or 50 degrees in some of these spots. But I digress. Julio Tehran. First start that we're going to get to see of him and boy, I'm encouraged by seeing these numbers, aren't you? 4.93 expected ERA in 2023. It was much improved. Now, 2022, we had all of off. But he was at an 8.80 expected ERA, 15.86. Again, that was all one start in 2021. So we're not going to even factor that one in. But legitimately, in the two and a half years of sample size that I have for it, 
it comes down to this. No swing and miss, 17.4% K rate. He got by by not putting extra batters on base. 4.5% walk rate this season in over 1,000 pitch sample size. But here is where it gets fun. Again, the Braves, 168 WRC+. Plus, 249 ISO against righties. Now, these are unsustainable type numbers, but I still think Atlanta finishes top three against righties when it comes to season end. And there are just, I mean, pick your poison, top of the lineup, bottom of the lineup, great bullpen, opportunity for massive potential here. And the run line, minus 109 over on DraftKings, pretty close on FanDuel here at the moment. Friends, your lock, the run line for Atlanta. Again, I do think this is as chalk as chalk can get. And at the same time, sometimes the chalk play can be the right play. Braves by fatality on Monday. Quick and easy here. James Paxton, Bailey Ober. Bailey Ober had one of the worst debuts of, I don't know, anybody in baseball right from the get-go. Hate the numbers that we saw right from the get-go from my Minnesota Twins starter that, well, Got some chase, I suppose, but the fastball velo down 91, 91.3 miles per hour average there on that fastball. I'm not encouraged by such things here. Again, 92, 93. We'll see kind of where it tops out. Actually, a little bit above average from last year's start. So I guess there's just the concern of like, I don't know, six hits, homer, a triple, a double. Gave up a lot of hard contact, and that, friends, is not fun for a guy who's generally been good at that. 35.7% hard hit percentage. But sometimes you read in too much to one start. It was against Kansas City, which is a decent offense at the top of that lineup. But, like, I'm not encouraged by anything that we saw from Bailey Ober. So I'm just going to kind of wait, pause on him, that is. Oh, as for James Paxton, I really don't think that he's going to have tons of problems with my Minnesota Twins here in this spot. I think you're going to have a lefty go up against a team that generally is going to be all right against lefties. Byron Buxton kind of prefers the righty side of things. Again, Alex Kirilov more neutralized against lefties. Kepler more neutralized against lefties. Matt Wallner against lefties. Really don't like the setup of our lineup whatsoever. We're going to have to roll out Willie Castro somewhere in the middle of that lineup. Not great, Bob. Not great. Not going to be good against lefties here. So Dodgers minus 142 here. They, had the, they did not play Sunday very well, obviously. Weather was terrible there in that Cubs game. Got completely shellacked around in that one. But I do think Shohei Otani is somebody who you need to be buying into here. 54.1% hard hit, 699 expected slugging. He is the reigning MVP here and from the AL for a reason, playing in the NL now. Obviously, look at that. I can differentiate the most basic concepts of baseball. Great job, Eric. B. Uh, Shohei Otani to home run, maybe a total bases ladder. Want to be, it's not even early to the party. Everybody knows he's good. It's a lean, but I think he just smashes the face off Bailey over. Weather's terrible, though. I want to see the numbers. Now watch this, because this is truly what it comes down to. 53% expected win percentage for Seattle. Not going to bet them at even money. 53% expected win percentage here for the Phillies. Now, again, that is positive EV, the lean that I gave you there from Seattle, but... I think if you just bet a bajillion of those over a course of any large sample size, you're all right. But I'm trying to give you the best plays. And again, I'm going to wait and hopefully that number moves to like plus 105 and I can really take advantage. But 53%, this is one of my favorite plays. This is borderline lock territory for me, but it's going to be like the Phillies taking on the Cardinals. And again, they are the dogs here with the 53% expected win percentage. Spencer Turnbull, Miles Michaelis. I think Miles Michaelis has one of the worst contracts in baseball. St. Louis kind of buried themselves by utilizing money for him and not somebody else. 538 expected slugging out through a couple of starts. 341 expected batting average. We saw moments where it got back to somewhat normal, but like a 15.9% K rate. They gave a boatload of money to a guy guy just to eat up innings and not strike out anybody sub 20 percent k rate in every season he's now 35 years of age he's coming off a year with a 5.44 expected era i don't know what to tell you i don't see a whole lot of good here and spencer turnbull like you could say he's problematic 66.7 percent hard hit percentage in that first start lots that you can definitely go out of your way to go pick on but a 6.12 expected era last season I think there's positive regression around the corner here for him purely because, purely because he's finding ways to just mix up some of the pitch mix. The four-seamer, it's 
fine. It's not good. But he got rid of the slider. And I'm kind of encouraged about that because you look at his slider from 2023, 290 batting average against, 452 slugging. I think if he just gets rid of that pitch entirely and this curveball, that he went from like 6% usage to 12% usage in that first start. If that can be useful, I think there's some utility in backing him with the better lineup in the Phillies, the better bullpen in the Phillies. Yeah, better bullpen in the Phillies, just ever so slightly. I think this is a good spot to just carve out a little bit of an edge. 53 expected win percentage. Again, that would be a lock on some type slates, or if I had a larger sample size, that would be useful too. But Philly money line, like it slightly better than that Seattle money line at the identical win percentage that I project out for both. So it makes the cut. It's on the card. Looking for a little bit more edge in order to try to make these plays. Otherwise, I'll just keep them off the card and keep them leans. Houston and Texas and Blanco on Sunday had five and what, two thirds that he had scoreless or no hit ball again. Glad I did not foray into anything in the baseball streets on Sunday. I just wanted to update my model, work on stuff. I did fire two small home run plays, quarter unit, both missed because of course they did, but such is life. MJ Melendez went yard right after Nelson Velasquez. I needed Nelson Velasquez, obviously. But anyway, Houston taking on Texas. Framber Valdez, Andrew Heaney, two lefties that are fun. Obviously, we attacked pretty significantly, Mr. Framber Valdez. Again, I know that there are issues with him. I know the second half of last season was an issue. I know the velocity was down. I know the ball rate is definitely down, but it started to show back up. Negative 6.2% launch angle so far this season at a 71.9% ground ball rate. If that continues, I find it hard to go out of my way to want to go pick on him in any way, shape, or form. And Andrew Heaney, this is a lefty that once upon a time with the Dodgers for like that hot second, and he was with the Angels, I'm with some dudes. But anyway, Andrew Heaney is one of those guys, 198 expected batting average, or ex-WOBA so far. I do not expect that to continue. I do not expect that to be sustainable. But what I do expect is for him to be a better pitcher based on what we saw in that 2022 season with the Dodgers. And then a 4.55 expected ERA, over 2,600 pitches, had a larger workload, K rate came down, kind of expect him to stabilize it a little bit. And at nine and a half, you're getting a key number. I'm going to call it a lean. I don't think it makes the cut, but in some capacity, we'll take a look at some K, some K props tomorrow. But Valdez Heaney, I think this is a sneaky spot to be shorting the game. Bet MGM friends, first bet safety net up to $1,500. Get your bonus bets if your first bet loses. Again, that is down at the link below. If you have DraftKings, if you have FanDuel, Bet MGM makes a great third sports book. If you have Caesars, great fourth sports book, it would be over at Bet MGM. It is one of the most reputable places that you can have an account and they're giving you a great deal at the entry point here. $1,500 in a safety net. So whether it's $20 that you want to be investing or $50 or $100 or $300, up to $1,500 is coming back to you on that first bet if it loses. So you can take a large, large money line shot. Hell, you could take a shot on Purdue money line in the Monday National Championship, the Natty. I think that one's going to be closer than most think. Six and a half feels like a pretty wide number. I'm thinking about... Uh, I'm not a college basketball analyst. I'm not going to go out of my way to talk about it. But just saying, great opportunity to get some plus money in your life. You want to take as big of a plus money shot as you are comfortable taking within reason, of course. Up to $1,500, maybe a little master play, if you will. Walking Neiman. I don't know. That's an idea. Up to $1,500 down at the link below, friends. Bet MGM, check them out. Only for 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back to the picks we go. We had some crazy wind, and then it got cold, and then it got warmer, and now it's going to be kind of flat out here. A little cool. Arizona taking on Colorado. Uh, crazy weather just to keep track of. It's a huge thing about baseball. It's just paying attention to weather, reacting to weather. Wrigley Field, there's a reason those totals don't come out ahead of time. Just throwing it out there. Again, one stadium. One stadium we're going to allow for them to have a roof on. But I'm actually looking at an under here pure, purely because of this. We got a decent pitcher on the Arizona side, like one of my favorite pitchers to be backing, period, in Zach Gallen. And we talk about altitude. What happens at altitude? Spin rate comes down. Things aren't going to curve as much. Well, you know what definitely combats that? Having a fastball. And this fastball, friends, it doesn't have a ton of velocity, but it has life that I still think will be all right at altitude here. We've seen this knuckle curve that he throws about 16% of the time be a devastating little addition to the arsenal. And I like, I like overall backing him in any way, shape or form that I can when I believe he's undervalued. Now, 
I'm only calling it a lean here on the under of 10 and a half because I think we get public numbers backing overs here at this spot. And I'm just going to wait closer to first pitch. I think the under is going to definitely be a play for me, assuming we get minus 110 or better here. And maybe this thing jumps up to 11 and you get that free little half. But either way, people like to bet themselves overs, especially in ballparks like Arizona and Colorado. So just be watching the line. We have the tracker on the bottom of Vod Shopper now where you can be tracking those lives, those lines as they're moving here. Zach Allen, awesome. Kyle Freeland's terrible. I'm not going to even defend it. That's really all I got for you. I do think Arizona against lefties going to be fascinating to watch going forward. But yeah, good talk. Glad we had it. Three games to go. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bells. We go to Tampa Bay taking on the Angels. Tampa Bay, that team that was just in Colorado for that crazy weather. Now, Anaheim, you work through some of the park factors, whether it's a baseball savant or fan graphs or wherever you want to be your chosen place. We know that this is going to play up a little bit for home runs, but Tyler Anderson, Mr. Anderson here on the other side, this lefty, kind of feeling interested in backing him in some capacity. I'll talk about what I think makes the most sense. But first, Zach Eflin, 4% walk rate there for the Tampa Bay Rays in that first you know, two outings that he's had here thus far. Very, very limited, 164 uh, pitch sample size. So a massive season from him last year, 3.02 expected ERA, sub 3.5% walk rate is just absurd. Like that's as good as it gets. George Kirby, the only starter that I have listed with a better walk rate than him who had that many innings underneath their belt over 2,500. So him and George Kirby kind of in a class of their own at keeping these unnecessary runners on base. Always fun if you're going to go out of your way to back them. Don't think I'm going to with these numbers. Again, Tampa Bay, pretty rightfully the favorite here going up against the Angels. But I think there's a chance to back Tyler Anderson in maybe not. I just This Angels pen is a disaster. Looked at the first five market. Didn't see anything that I like there. But two and a half earned runs. I think we'll get plus money here. And I think Tyler Anderson has the kind of stuff. But yeah, Tampa Bay, they're scary as shit against lefties. They're going to be all season long. And uh, you got Randy Orozarena. He's kind of the main highlight centerfold. You've got a 125 WRC plus against lefties so far. And a very limited sample size, of course. Just a 93 plate appearances. And, well, you get into face Colorado and Colorado is going to inflate that. But a 27% K rate. Maybe there's a couple of extra swing and misses he gets unnecessarily. He's not a swing and miss guy. And I don't think I'm going to be backing him for that reason. But... I think we're going to see him prevent a lot of extra runners. The 10.2% walk rate last season was a massive outlier. He was at 4.8% in 2022, so we're getting fewer guys on base. He had a 3.10 expected ERA in 2022, 4.96 here in 2023. But so far this season, his numbers on all of his pitches look a lot more similar to the 2022 numbers. You can literally look at the entire vertical movement graphs on each one of them. Looks a little better and that's showing up in the results column again just two starts but against Miami just the one start specifically that I really want to be talking about again Tyler Anderson this is a guy that I really think again it's just the one start from Anderson one guy 34 years of age maybe we're gonna have a little bit of a renaissance where he at least prevents the earned runs here I want major plus money like better than plus 120 to get two and a half earned runs less than in this spot Let's get to two more games. I do have two more plays. And again, that's a lean for now, but I need to see the number. The Cubs, the Padres, uh, Yu Darvish has been fun. He's been fun to watch. Yu Darvish just doing the Yu Darvish things. The pitch count continues to rise. He opened the Soul Series. He's had more starts than anybody there as a result. Well, him, Tyler Glass now, but you know, Glass now, they're going to be very careful with the kitty gloves there with the Dodgers because you're waiting for Kershaw. You're waiting for... You know, one day we'll see Walker Bueller pitch again. I can't wait for that day. But Javier Assad, friends. Javier Assad is kind of the dude that I want to be highlighting in this se section. He's a guy that I liked a lot last season. 4.64 expected ERA. Wasn't very good, but he kind of does a couple of things. He had a 3.05 ERA. And one of the things that can be a little bit misleading is if a guy is very location-based and he gets hit hard, Maybe he has some type of control over where the ball is going, but that's just kind of one of those, like, we could argue about this for days and months and years in baseball circles about whether a pitcher can actually prevent that, which is why we lean more on the hard hit data. But he's a guy that overall kept the fly balls to more of like a advantageous spot in certain spots. 22.8% fly ball rate isn't great by any means. 47.3% ground ball rate isn't great by any means. 
but it's 6% better than what it was in 2022. And he found improvements there. Now, just a 40% ground ball rate, but it's a very short sample size and going into a good pitcher's park here in Petco. And you, Darvish, somebody, again, everything is checking out here on his side. I think the under of seven and a half is worth a play here at minus 110. I don't think the number is going anywhere. So if you have a lot on your plate right now, if you're going to be playing a lot of props in OS or anything else, you want to lower your exposure, I'm happy to keep this one off. But this one just barely makes the cut over like the Seattle money line, things of that nature. Think you want to be adding it to the card. And one more coming up now. Blake Snell, let's talk about him. Bet the Padres are going to miss him. The reigning Cy Young winner making his Giants debut, taking on, <laughs> not a Cy Young winner, but he looked good in his first outing, I suppose. Trevor Williams here and the Washington Nationals. Now you have huge favorites here for the San Francisco side, but Trevor Williams, 57% hard hit percentage in that first outing. Survived it, was okay without it. 2.89 expected ERA. Found some strikeouts, 23.8% K rate. Again, it's just one outing, one outing of five strikeouts, only two walks. But a 0.94 whip, if he kept that going, He'd be the best pitcher on this staff by far. I think he's actually better than Josiah Gray for what it's worth. All-star Josiah Gray. But Blake Snell, friends, this guy, well, I had to go through a lot to try to figure out how many pitches he was in these simulated games. He was at 60 on March 17th. Then a week later, he ends up getting ramped up to 70. I'd be surprised if we saw him go 85 in this first start, 90 in this first start, but it's not completely off the table. I just think that there's enough unknown and downside to the pitch count that I think Washington plus one and a half is the side to be on. It is a very, very good pitcher's poll. It's like top three in baseball, pitching in San Francisco. And this is a pretty wide number. Again, the money line plus 185, 100 cent difference between that and the run line. There's a reason for it. This total, eight, seven and a half, eight, seven and a half, anywhere you look. You reduce that variance, go ahead and win this game in close fashion here. But without the variance of home runs, without the variance of a lot of base runners and Washington's bullpen, not good by any means, but early in the season healthy, I think we're going to see some closer games for them than in years past. And well, I'm getting nearly even money to find out. So Washington plus one and a half last play on the court. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks in the MLB Streets. We're going to have a great week this week. Again, want to be cautious with your bankroll. Be smart. Manage it correctly. Sign up for Odd Chopper down below. Again, going to be utilizing the market-based approach where you can get positive EV props in your pocket. That's going to be more valuable than me going from a projections-based standpoint right now. So if you're looking at Odd Chopper right now, sign up. Take advantage of it as we're accumulating sample size. Again, just taking advantage of where there are inefficiencies. Very, very valuable this time of year. Thank you, producer Jacob. Phenomenal stuff as always. Till next time, friends. I'm Eric Lindquist. No NBA, by the way. I'm Eric Lindquist. Uh, best of luck in the MLB streets on Monday.